All right, welcome back. Lecture three. So what we're going to be doing in this is we're going to take an image, we're going to Photoshop the background out of it, and we're going to create what's called Entourage, which in this is basically um, filling in it, filling a renderer or some other image with um, kind of like people to represent scale in your architectural products. All right. So I'm going to take my source image and I'm going to drag it in here. It's going to take a minute to import. All right. So what we're going to do with this is that we're going to Photoshop out the background. Right. In the last lecture, I said that there was a uh, we had an artboard that we we're working on. So this is one of those cases where because of the way this was imported, it's got a background um, and it's not going to be on an artboard. So to get around this, the first thing I want you to do is double click on this background. It's going to say new layer and just hit OK. All right. Um, what would happen otherwise if I undo that is if we go in here and we start erasing, you can see that it just kind of erases to whatever my background color is um, right here. So let me undo that. Where's my history? Why did that go away? All right. Um, so we've got the image here. And so what we'll do is double click on it hit OK. And now when I erase, you can see that you get that checkered background color right there. That's indicating that there's transparency in this drawing. So once we create that transparency, we'll be able to take this over um, to the other pro to the other image. All right. So um, there's a couple of different ways that you could clear this out. And I'm going to kind of walk through some of them. And these were kind of tools we glossed over really quickly. So the first thing I could do is just use no, thank you. Um, is use the marquee tool just to clear out bulk areas of this image. Okay. Um, we don't need that. We don't need that. And so I could quickly just kind of get a very narrow area to work with here. Um, again, I could come in with the lasso tool here and um, sorry, polygonal. I prefer that one for this. Um, and just kind of start going through and narrowing those edges down. All right. And then I can delete that and we're good there. Um, one of my favorite tools for actually, not for that, all right, um, is actually going to be this little button right here. So if I select an area, let's say like that, there we go, and then I click uh, either on the keyboard, it's going to be the, uh, the Q key. And what it's going to do is it's going to switch this drawing so that you can see this kind of like color, color, um, color shifted thing here. Um, and anything that you're selecting is going to be that lighter color and anything that you're going to be um, not selecting is going to be that red. All right. Um, when you're in this, this is the quick mask mode. And so I can go in and I'm not going to do this quite yet, but I can change an area right here in the quick mask, turn the quick mask off, and you can see that my selection area has changed. All right. That's more for refining. Um, what I want to do first is I want to actually go back um, There it is. OK. Um, I want to go back to right here. Actually, let's go back to the start of the image. Um, and you can kind of do this any way you want, but I think this is kind of the fastest way to do a lot of this, is to select the magic wand tool right here. So again, make sure if you don't have, it might have that quick object selection um, by default. Um, I'm going to hold down on it and open this up so that I've got the magic wand option right there. And then I'm going to set the tolerance to something, uh, I'm going to guess like 50, and we'll see how that does. And so you can see if I click right there, we actually get a pretty good selection of the area. Now, if I hit delete with this, you can see that we actually lose some of burn here. All right. So I don't want to use that directly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use that to start um, this. And I'm going to hold down shift while I go through here and kind of outline some of these areas that I do want to kind of work with. And then I'm going to go into that quick mask mode. So I'm going to hit Q. And you can see that we've got these areas selected. Now, um, we can always select the inverse of what we're working with. So I'm going to jump through here and I'm going to use the eraser tool, which basically is just a subtractive brush. So everything that we did with the brush kind of applies to it. And I'm going to go through and I'm just going to quickly kind of cut off large areas that I 
no, we aren't going to want in here. Um, so that very quickly gets us a very close crop Bernie here. And then we're going to take this. Oh, switch back to the brush tool. I got to get rid of all the trash brush things I applied to it in the previous demo. Um, let's go back here. So we'll go back to a circular shape. Go a little bit narrower. Okay. So. There we go. Alright. Whoa. Too big. Too big. Oh, let's turn the flow all the way back up too. Okay. Oops. Jeez, I still. This is why sometimes they're a pain. Um, no, nothing. There we go. Okay, back to normal brush now. All right, so now I can go back in, and sometimes you get lucky, and it's pretty easy to just kind of. Well, I say this with 14 years of experience using Photoshop, it's easy to just really quickly glide along like that with a mouse and select things and change the drawing area. So. Um, we'll do that, and that pretty quickly gets us a really good mask of most of Bernie. Um, I can erase this area right here, and then we'll just kind of come back in and do the rest of his head after that. So, we'll get that right there, and we'll kind of just fudge the rest of his hair. Um, that's kind of one of the hard things is just kind of getting wispy hair like that and we'll fill in that selection there okay so we have our selection of Bernie I'm gonna hit Q and we will go back to this view now so you can see again we have um, the opposite area of what we wanted selected so I'm gonna go to select up here at the top I'm going to choose inverse or control shift I on your keyboard and we have actually no we did actually want to keep that well, okay, so we know um, control shift I and then we can change it. So we do actually want to delete the area around him. So now yeah, we've got that, we've got Bernie. Um, so that's step one. We've got Bernie isolated here. Next thing is we need a second image. We need an image to put this on. So I'm going to bring that in. And if you drop it in this little bar area up here, you can see that um, it kind of opens as another thing. Whereas if I was to drag it in here, sometimes it just does that. So make sure you drag it into this space right here where these kind of tabs are sitting. All right, so I've got this right here. What I want to do next is, oh, is check for stragglers that were still sitting in the image. Um, what this is doing is you see how it's not directly bordering him. There's little random pixels that I missed kind of floating around out here. So I'm just gonna use the eraser tool to kind of clean that up. This is more OCD than it is necessary. Um, yeah, that should be good enough. Oop, there goes his elbow. All right, so there's Bernie. All right, so we are going to control A to select all that's on this layer. I'm gonna do control C. Did that that didn't work there we go control a control c then i'm going to go over to this image and control v and you can see here that again the um i was talking about number of pixel sizes so the image that i had of bernie super high resolution um, whereas the image that i got here of chico state is a lot smaller so i'm going to have to shrink bernie down to get him to fit in here and as i do it i'm actually going to lose um, pixels because of that transition so as Bernie gets smaller right now he's still good and I can still make him bigger again but once I apply this we will put him next to this couple that's awkwardly making out on the grass here there we go all right so once I click this little check mark right here it's actually going to apply it and it's going to resample 
whatever that image was that I dragged in here down to a value that's appropriate, um, just like I scaled down the full size image itself. All right. So again, you always kind of want to start big and go small, and Photoshop generally will figure that out. What is that? All right, um, so anyway, we're going to put Bernie right there, and yeah, we're good with him on there. So um, when we're talking about Entourage, though, generally you aren't going to want to let whatever it is that you're working with be full color like that. Um, sometimes you are going to want, say, people fully dressed or whatever, but typically you also want to show off your project. So what you want to do is actually create sort of a shadow is how you want to place your entourage okay so I'm gonna select this area again I'm gonna hit V to get the move tool out and again make sure auto select is right here oh um, you might have to make sure that the show transform controls is on too might have to edit that back in earlier in the video all right, so um, once I've done that, selected the entire layer, I can click on Bernie and drag him, and you can see it's selected just kind of his area right there. I'm going to now switch back to the brush tool, and I'm going to crank this all the way up and just kind of cover him all in black. And then I'm going to copy this instead over into the image. And you see now we have just this um, all black Bernie right here. Oh, I hit the wrong button. There we go. Okay. Got to zoom out to get this going. All right, so um, if we've got this image right here, um, again we're going to go into the. That's about right, right? Yeah. Okay. So we can go now into the layers here, and in, so we can work with our entourage as solid black, and then we can edit the opacity of the layer that this is on. So I can actually take the opacity down to say something like 34%. So you can see that he's still there. You still get the idea. Well, let's do it a little bit higher. Let's do 62%. So you can see that he's that's there, but it's not obscuring what's behind it. So when you place your entourage into your finished photos, you want people to be able to see kind of what's important, what your work is, um, and not necessarily the entourage. But the entourage helps give it scale. Um, another option is kind of cranking this a little bit higher, and then just doing um, one of these ones produces a good overlay. There we go, soft light. Um, and that can pretty reliably create kind of, hey, there's a person here, but it's not going to obstruct the view, okay? So um, that's kind of what you'll be doing for your milestone. You will be um, taking an image, um, whatever your source image might be, and you will create entourage by removing the background from them. Um, and I'll probably have you guys use Bernie just so you can follow along. But um, you'll find a different image and Photoshop him into it, um, as is the rage these days. Um, and then I will have some more instructions for you in the milestone assignment for this. So um, I will see you guys in class on Thursday.